Determinism and the related idea that free will must be an illusion of some kind, and indeed the fact that that's exactly what it is, makes many people uneasy. Not just egotists who can't stand the idea of not being in control, but also those who've given serious thought to the matter and find it creates natural logical consequences that raise issues that need solutions. Such people find implications for things like meaning and morality, or how we respond to behaviour that we deem antisocial or criminal. If people don't have free will, and in an ultimate sense could not have done other than what they did, how can we judge them for it? Now, I don't find any of these questions a problem at all, and here's why. On the subject of meaning, there's simply no issue. Meaning comes into the world via the mechanisms of consciousness. Determinism, which is simply causality, drives all of that. It brings meaning into the world. Therefore, there is meaning. Therefore, there is no problem. If there is a problem, it's the egotistical attachment people have to deluded notions of what meaning is and from whence it originates. And frankly, that's something for them to work out for themselves. The issue of behaviour and moral judgement and how we respond to what we deem antisocial or criminal behaviour is a little more interesting. How can we morally judge a person, or punish them, or incarcerate them, if they don't really have freedom of will and acted as they did because a force within their nature determined their action, and in such a way that they really couldn't have done otherwise? Well, we can actually judge them very easily. You can respond to a behaviour or action pragmatically, without there having to be any moral dimension to that judgement, or without there having to be any sense of free agency on the part of the enactor. I mean, we do this sort of thing with five and six-year-olds all the time. We treat them as unfree agents doing what their natures demand. We don't really judge them morally because they've not yet reached the age of reason and therefore do not function within that framework. If we're sane and rational, we don't act punitively towards them but instead seek to modify their behaviour by modifying their natures. This is sometimes known as parenting something of a lost art. So it's entirely possible to judge and respond to actions and behaviour pragmatically without the moral overlay. The analogy with adults isn't perfect, but it's still useful. We may not be able to judge a person as a free moral agent in the classical and conventional sense, but that doesn't stop us from judging them and responding to them as unfree causal agents. We can hold a person responsible for a given action for the exceedingly simple reason that they did it. Society has a right to protect itself and its interests. There's nothing to stop it from judging certain actions to be a threat to itself and thereby seek to remove that threat and do so in the form of the separation of that threat from itself in whatever way is warranted by the level and type of threat posed. The important thing is the difference in what happens thereafter and the mentality involved in the subsequent dealings with that causal agent. In the moral free will paradigm, the punitive is the key to everything. In the determinist, free will is illusory paradigm, rehabilitation and modification of behaviour and nature becomes the order of the day. And yes, I know we give lip service even now to the concept of those latter things, but it's all really caught up in the view that punishment is itself rehabilitating and modifying. Now, I consider that a largely idiotic view for more than one reason, but humans are given to bouts of idiocy, so we can't expect too much. Now, let me stress that the determinist framework would not of itself make the judicial system and all its functions any less complex, necessarily. It would mostly change attitudes and approaches, but it would change them for the better, for the saner, all of the emotional and physical resources we now put into our punitive model would be channeled into an authentic system of rehabilitation and modification of nature and behaviour. But rather than go into the various issues and complexities of that which would really require a video series of itself, 
I just want to make the basic but important point that we are not left in a helpless state by the determinist worldview in the face of certain forms of behaviour. We are still able to, and perfectly entitled to, respond to forms of actions we designate detrimental to society's interest. How we do that, and the quality with which we do that, is obviously a matter of how sane a given society is. That's also a matter for another video series, and in some sense is what this channel is devoted to. The bottom line is that for me, the issues raised by people in the face of the determinist view and the fact of the illusory nature of the freedom of will are really non-issues. They're mostly just egotistical laments. People crying over the absence of that which they really wish were true. Crying over the loss of their ability to make moral judgments and dance in the spotlight of their goodness and righteousness. What rational people need to do is find ways to respond to what they've established as the true state of affairs. That's the real challenge.